parents in quarantine, it's like, don't turn your nose up at how well children are understanding social distancing. I explained it for 45 minutes today, and my toddler coughed three inches away from my mouth instead of <laughs> one. Uh huh. Jackson, usually it takes him a couple of seconds, but he'll cough and then he'll be like, oh, you have to cover your mouth. And then he'll cover his mouth and fake cough into his, his arm. <laughs> Oh, it's so cute. And then you're like, you're still dirty, but look at right. how hard you're trying. You have gross toddler germs, but I'll give you that. Yeah. I just had a gross thought. I was using the bathroom before we started, and I was pulling my pants up, and I realized no one ever talks about how dirty the waistband of your pants are. And yeah, your absolutely. Mm-hmm. Everyone's talking about their cell phones and the bottoms of their purses. I'm never touching those again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think I, I heard that a long time ago. Now that you say that, I did read that somewhere. And it was like, what's the dirtiest part of going to the bathroom? And I think that was that was it. It's, it's like the back of your pants. Oh, my God. I'm just going to walk out with it at my knees in every public bathroom. I'm going to wash and then pull my pants up. <laughs> so nasty. Right. I think of how many times a day I have to shimmy my pants back up. Mm -hmm. So I'm just touching the same spots that I had pee-pee hands with. <laughs> yeah, well, there's that. Yep. That's how the corona started, I'm the sure. Pee-pee hands? Pee-pee hands in the pants. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. I never occurred to me that before. So anyways, those women who wear only skirts, they got something going for them. <laughs> they knew a long time ago. Absolutely, they did. How are you? Good. Good. Do you have anything <laughs> new going on? No, not really. Same old, same old shit. Different day. What day is it? No one knows. I don't even know. It's your day off. It is. I went to Walmart. Ooh, how was it? It was fine. I got groceries. <laughs> so, oh, I forgot I was going to tell you this. So, I needed to get lube, right? And Mm. So I was like, I'm pretty sure Walmart sells it, whatever, I'll just get some. So mm -hmm. <laughs> apparently they lock that up at Walmart now in a case. So you have to find an employee and look them in the mm -hmm. eye and say, hey, can you open this case for me so I can buy some lube so my husband can fuck me in the ass later. And so I was, <laughs> I was texting TJ and I was like, so is this what I'm supposed to do? Like, I'm just supposed to ask this lady this? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. You have to give them the reason why you're, what, what you're using the lube for so that they can decide whether or not it's essential and let you purchase it. <laughs> I was like, you fucking smart ass. <laughs> Ma'am, butt sex is not essential at this time. We're, <laughs> right currently allowing <laughs> extra dry pussy syndrome as an yep. excuse but yep. that's that's basically it's it it's the only one we can't sell this to you we're also gonna put a big <laughs> yellow flag on your back so that everyone knows you tried to purchase it <laughs> it's just a note that says i wanted to have anal tonight <laughs> but can't get lube <laughs> right I was like, this is so embarrassing. Like, I understand people steal stuff, but can't you have like a special section for honest people that just want to buy lube and don't want anybody to know about it? Like, can I just go in the corner and buy it or there? I swear I'll pay for it. It's it's like a speakeasy inside of Walmart where you have to like find the special entrance. Yes, that. Sign me up for that. They don't even lock up, like, iPhones or tablets or anything. They're like, anyone who could find this Narnia will not steal. We, <laughs> we know, know you're an honest person. Here you go. <laughs> it's already embarrassing enough to have anyone else in the aisle when you're picking that stuff up. Like, no one wants to buy, like, a right. douche or condom and Absolutely. shit. Absolutely. Like, yeah. No, and I was like, they have big, two big sides of the case, and one side is, like, pregnancy tests and stuff, and the other side is, like, lube and vibrators and condoms. And I was like, maybe if I just avert my eyes this way, they'll think I'm buying a pregnancy test, and that's reasonable. And then when they're gone, I'll look at the lube again. <laughs> they turn back, and you're just running with arms, like, ten boxes in your arms, which is lube. I'm only going to do this once. <laughs> I'm never doing it again. <laughs> never. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. That was my exciting well, shopping trip of the day. That's, uh, that's the price you got to pay if you don't want to have dry sex. Oh, man. Yeah, there's uh, nothing new with me. I've pounded out a ton of smut club books this week, which is just 
un- record breaking. Like, yeah, it's so unlike me, but I have nothing else to do, and it's really stimulating for my brain. Good. So yeah, I think I've read three and since Sunday. That's amazing. Nice. Which one did you read? Did you read um the one the after? Rest of, yep. And then the I'm finishing up the last, the very last one of the series. Yeah. No, it's been nice. Travis been working overnight, so I don't. No one is here to hug me or anything. So that's why you read so much. I will, yeah, might as well feel like I'm getting a, you know, a hug of the vagina. <laughs> it's all GQs, you need. As Travis calls them. GQs. I heard on the radio, was it this morning or yesterday? I don't remember. But it was like one of those spoof commercials on KDWB. And they were like, I had a fidget spinner and it worked for a couple days, but... Then I was just fidgeting again, so my husband recommended my fidget box, and now I fidget my box all the time. My hands are so busy, <laughs> and it was like, knock, 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 honey, come out of the bathroom. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing with my fidget box. <laughs> like, that's okay. <laughs> I mean, it's probably the most convenient thing. Right. It's just right there. It's so enjoyable it's like to just time. play with your fidget box all day. Maybe that's what I'll do. It'll help my ADHD when I go back to work. I'm just like, just let you know I have a fidget box underneath my desk. So please don't, please announce yourself before you come around the corner. Don't draw any attention to it. Just ignore it. (laughs) It's completely normal. (laughs) Everyone does it. Oh, man. Well, we're on, uh, you know, day 312 of quarantine. Mm -hmm. I am. (laughs) I have to admit. I mean, I think I'm on three full weeks of being home but I have to admit yesterday was a sad day like I got super fucking bummed out I don't know why just I felt really great being stuck in the house yeah and it wasn't even like I wanted to go anywhere or do anything I just think it was like couldn't really go outside it was kind of cold if you went outside the hunter would complain that it was freezing and yeah um just focusing on his schoolwork again and Travis has been asleep during the day so you have to be quiet I can't even go in my room yeah so it caught up to me yesterday and then Hunter I'm sure it caught up to him too because he started being kind of a little shit arguing (laughs) with me and so then me and him are bickering and it's just like I fucking hate this like all I wanted to do was to go like walk around Target or something yeah you know just for like funsies right or I don't know ignore everyone Take some random shit you don't need you could just go online shopping that's true that's true you know me though i hate i don't buy anything online because i'm a bitch when it comes to shipping like five dollars not paying Absolutely for shipping not. straight garbage not doing it nope unless i can get it for free i don't care if i have to get things shipped in three separate boxes six months apart <laughs> oh, <they're> free shipping. <laughs> i didn't even want to pay for shipping on a napkin holder so travis went out and made me one it actually turned out <laughs> really nice <laughs> i thought it was gonna be just a piece of shit and he was like give it like a beveled edge and put a design on it and he's like i'll i'll stay in it next week i was like wow this is better <laughs> but yeah it caught up to me yesterday and then i felt like oh I'm, you know it kind of go down that hole of like oh never gonna work again this is my new life mm-hmm. everything's shit what i'm gonna do when oliver is home full-time after tomorrow like all those like like I'm bad at this I'm not cut out for this and mm-hmm. then I went to sleep and I woke up and I felt better and so, now you're fine day. I'm not fine I'm drinking a very large mason jar of wine right now <laughs> a mason jar of wine huh makes me feel cool oh yeah plus sure. I broke all my wine glasses <laughs> mason jars <laughs> so. are much thicker they're more durable no it's gonna get better I just need the weather to be nice I need yeah. to be outside yeah and yeah, going yeah, for walks yeah. and fresh air so we're gonna exactly. do that in open a, a fucking bit. window and you'll be fine yep drink another glass of wine open a window and yeah. jump out of it <laughs> promptly jump out of it after you finish the wine though yeah i'm not gonna waste it yeah exactly i'm gonna finish the box mm-hmm. Trap's just gonna let it sit in there he'll never throw it away until he gets a new girlfriend she'll be like how old is this wine it's aged he'll be like, to Jessica, perfection that used to be amanda <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I was looking at the kids yesterday and I was just thinking like you guys need me to stick around there is not a step mommy in the world that's not going to beat you <laughs> <laughs> not one that's not true 
Their, her real kids will move in with her and they'll get your rooms and you guys are going to get beat. <laughs> oh, that's actually Jackson's favorite thing to say right now is whenever he's doing something naughty. And he said it this morning. I think he was kicking my seat and I was like, don't kick mommy's seat. And he goes, don't kick mommy's seat or daddy will beat you. And I was like, oh, that that got aggressive fast. Did you, you don't say that at school, do you? <laughs> what's his other news statement mommy oh god so he must have heard and i honestly i don't think that i said it i think that's more of a tj saying but we usually tell the cats or the chickens or whatever to get so tj i believe it was him says fucking get Mm -hmm. because i think he gets really mad at the cats when they he gets a lot madder than i do when the cats run in the garage so i know for certain he's said it at least once so he'll fucking get Mm -hmm. so jackson started yelling fucking get to the cockdoodle and i had to correct him and say no 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 no. now i know exactly what you're saying and you can't say that only mommy and daddy can say it you have to say go away cockdoodle or get kitties and so now he says and he'll still like at least once a day he'll correct me and he'll say jackson does not say fucking get only mommy and daddy say fucking get. Jackson says, go away, cockdoodle. And I'm like, okay, so stop saying it. <laughs> he has to reference it. You're not going to know what he's talking about unless he references the phrase twice. Jackson cannot say fucking get. <laughs> Please stop. Don't say it at school. <laughs> Well, I will allow you to blame TJ for part of it, but knowing you for 10 years, I know for a fact and I can replay all the moments in my head where I've seen you go Raina May fucking get I know fucking get I know so I, I do know it's it's both of you guys but hey my son <laughs> heard me call Travis fucking stupid and then he turned around and said mommy is it nice to call someone fucking stupid <laughs> or uh, he I mean he repeats me all the time that's fucked that's fucked up what that's right fuck? I remember like, he yeah. said that I remember that that's funny I mean it's not all funny the epic but night. it's it's funny. It's so funny. I wonder it's so funny when they just if teachers laugh when they do it at school. Yeah, I really wonder what actually gets said. Like I know the daycare lady has heard things before, like my mommy and daddy take showers together, or <laughs> my mommy does. Like I can, I can only hope that he's just relaying the the best information because you know those teachers aren't going to tell you. Mm-mm. Well, uh, yeah, like I'm just harmful. waiting for them to confront me, like. Jackson said fucking get to another student earlier today and then also uh, says daddy beats him. <laughs> so I'm waiting for a phone call from Child Protective Services. Yeah, I, or just, uh, you know, I'll just come over and high five you. It'll make you feel better. Like, Thank you. And what are they going to do? They'll take your kid away and then you're like, great, a vacation. I'll take and them, then they'll don't promptly bring him the fuck back because man is he a little brat. They won't even get to the end of the driveway. And they're like, oh, God. <laughs> That's Abort a lot. mission. <laughs> well, did you learn your lesson? Good. We just wanted to give you a little scare, Mrs. Olson. <laughs> Here's your child. Here you Please go. Please don't let anyone call. Don't let it happen again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they just put a note in your file. Like, maybe could use small beating once in a while. <laughs> a firm hand. <laughs> I never hurt anyone. Oh, man. Okay. Well, you know, I did the math wrong, so I prepped a completely different episode that will still happen for May. Uh, but in the meantime, I did I did have another idea that I was debating on um, just to help bring light to all these people that are stuck at home. And this is not to take credit away from any of the essential workers and people who have to go to work every day because that shit's scary as fuck everyone else gets to be safe at home and not get a d- disease that we know little about. <laughs> so mm-hmm. definitely all the praise to Jessica and Travis and nurses and doctors and dog doctors and all those people, sanitation workers. Mm-hmm. That does suck though. Like they have to still go to work every day while everyone else collects like an extra 600 a week in unemployment and then just gets to watch Netflix all day. <laughs> like. <laughs> It is, there's two sides to the coin here, but uh-huh. this this one directly relates to my situation. I started thinking about it because I am obviously on my phone a lot more now, but mm-hmm. all these like, 
you know, Instagram pages and YouTube channels of women that are like, how to be the best you in quarantine, and this is how I spend my day, and how to redo your bathroom, well, well, like all these things. They're giving advice to people on how they're supposed to live their life right now, and I just go, fuck you, fuck you, and I scroll past it, or I think about writing a nasty comment, like, you look like a a Wookiee, like, I don't know, just... (laughs) Your mom's a whore. I don't know. I just want to be mean to these people. Your mom's a whore. Because <laughs> I feel like they're judging me. And I also feel like they're big fucking phonies, too. Like, mm-hmm. they're all full of shit. So I thought it would be okay to write up 10 pieces of advice for people who are stuck at home in quarantine with their children. <laughs> and I tried to make them very light and funny and entertaining it's the nightmare so it's the nightmare before my 30th birthday <laughs> to start this whole thing off this quarantine and motherhood and parenthood and this also applies to the men who stay at home i'm not being sexist we get it dads do this too but i would like to point out that it's a majority of women who mm-hmm. are in this situation sure so i'm going to be biased because i have a vaheen and not a TV. <laughs> so all the men killing it at home with it too. Like, keep keep it up. You're doing great. But this is more focused to the women. So this whole thing is set up really unrealistic and unfair expectations um, to parents that are now supposed to be doing multiple jobs in one day. You're supposed mm-hmm. to be either working full time from home or or you're unemployed. Um, Stay at home parent. You're supposed to be a teacher and you're supposed to be a fucking housekeeper. But mm-hmm. also not be able to go anywhere, use any community resources, and you're not supposed to take your kids to the store. Mm-hmm. So the fuck are you supposed to do? These are all completely separate jobs, and there's a reason that, you know, working full-time, a teacher, they all have different wages and are completely different fields of employment. So they're right. not supposed to be done all at once, <laughs> especially by a bunch of people who didn't choose to do it. Because I saw some comment of like, what do you think stay-at-home moms who homeschool have been doing for all these years? Yeah, but that's their fucking choice. They like that. Mm-hmm. They weren't well, and then forced so that, into it. That's fine. You're a stay-at-home mom that homeschools, but you've had time to do the research to figure out some sort of curriculum, and you also aren't expected because there are other people that, that are still having to work from home, so you're still working your full-time job and trying to figure Mm -hmm. out how to homeschool your kid, which you've never done before. You're not prepared for that. Yeah, I was talking to another friend of mine who went, her boys went to daycare with uh, Hunter. And so like a first grader and a third grader, and she still has to work full time from home. And her husband is essential. So he's gone long shifts all day long. And she Mm -hmm. was messaging me on Instagram like, I'm not handling this. This is too much. <laughs> right. It's it's just too much. So it's unrealistic. So I thought to help uh, keep the edge off and to like lower some expectations during this dumpster fire, you know, pandemic, mm-hmm. that these would be good things to, to help get you through the day, to, to <laughs> set the bar a little lower. All right. Let's all stop trying so hard. It's not worth it. <laughs> all right. I have 10 rules and then I wrote a little segment underneath it uh, and then we will... I would like your feedback if you think these are, if these are good, if this is good advice to follow or if it's completely insane and not healthy for a family. Okay. Rule number one, screen time is no longer a thing. Don't look at that clock. Time does not exist anymore. (laughs) What does exist? Dishes, laundry, making the 16th snack of the day and your stank ass that hasn't showered in three days. Give them the fucking tablet. Nobody will know because you no longer have a social life. (laughs) It's true. Solid. It is. I would Who's still, judge I you? should, uh, you should still shower. I mean, this is actually probably a really great time for those people that were like, like for me, you know, I wash my hair every day. I know it's not very good for your hair, but if I don't wash my hair, it's going to be super greasy. So what a great time to sit at home and not wash your hair and let your hair rebuild those wonderful oils. Yes. And this is me advising people to wash their snake ass. Yeah. Wash your booty hole. <laughs> wash, wash it. Wash that hole. You know, when you walked into like this, you know, when you were allowed to go in public and you'd be in like a public bathroom, you're like, I smell nasty puss. Like someone in here (laughs) has got smelly crotch syndrome. And now if you're walking around your house and that smell pops up, it's you, bitch. You've got to wash it. (laughs) You can't blame nobody else. You can't turn to your fucking husband and be like, your pussy smells, man. (laughs) You got to wash that. 
It's inappropriate. So, yeah, just give it to them. Like, there's nobody's going to judge you if you need five minutes of sanity or you want to take a fucking nap so you don't, again, jump out the window. <laughs> give them the tablet. No one gives a shit. And your kids right. are, will be much happier. Just let them do it. You could even, do if Who you cares? don't want to feel guilty about it, turn on something educational. Yeah. Give them Khan Academy. It's a free app. It's basically the same as, you know, garbage apps, but at least they have to, like, answer a math question once in a while. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And again, no one's going to find out. All the secrets of your household are yours <laughs> to keep, man. What no happens at home stays at home because that's mm-hmm. quarantine. Quarantine secret time. <laughs> All right. Rule number two. You do not have to learn new math. You have sat down with the best intentions on practicing addition with your child. You liked math in high school, right? It comes easy to you, right? Or you figure, how hard can elementary math really be? Then you realize that they fucking changed math. (laughs) It's no longer something parents can recognize. It's like trying to read your own name in Braille. It should be easy, but it's not. Give up. Instead, teach them some useful math. Like if mommy tells you to play in your room for 60 minutes and you come up 10 minutes early, how hard is mama going to snap on your ass? (laughs) The answer is very hard. (laughs) Also, make sure you're honest with them and so that they know that they will have a calculator with them at all times when they're an adult. Don't be a liar like your math teacher was, Ms. Campa. (laughs) True. They've completely changed math. It is not. I wrote out a math problem. I was like a pretend worksheet for him. And I did like five plus two, you know, where you stack it on top of each other and then you mm-hmm. put the line underneath. He had yeah. no idea what that was. They do it. They do it differently. Yeah, and I'm they not draw some it. like big weird ass square over the top or some shit. And yeah, I don't know. It's weird. It's dumb. Thank God doesn't, he's a kindergartner. Doesn't I can't make any sense. These parents that have to school they're like middle school can you imagine middle school math no no absolutely not no thank you he'll catch up next year (laughs) worst thing he'll end up in dumb math like i was that's fine (laughs) it's perfectly fine all right rule our advice number three kids are useful make them do some shit i quickly learned that my kindergartner is not burning as much energy as he used to being cooped up all day at home the weather is shitty so we have no choice all those people side note Everyone quarantined with a pool. Fuck you. Fuck you. They should take away their pools. We should all have to be on the same playing field. I think everyone should go and drop something disgusting in their pool so they can't use it. Like a deuce. And they have to, yeah, drop a deuce (laughs) right in the filter so it breaks it up and, like, spreads it out. Not something you can scoop out. That's not very nice. Take their pools away. It's not fair that there's people living in California (laughs) We're like, oh, hey, quarantine, and they're in their swimsuits. It's 80 degrees. Like, right. no, we can't leave our house because it snows every five minutes. Right. That's well, my mother in law is stuck in Florida right now, and so she'll send me a picture of like the sunrise from her back patio and her pool. And I'm just like, I want to be quarantined. <laughs> yeah, that's the best place on earth to quarantine. Right. I'm just, I'm just jealous. So I'm being nasty, but just don't post pictures of it. Don't, or don't rub complain. it in our face. Yes. Oh, gosh. So to help your sweet little babies burn off some energy, give them chores to do throughout the day. You can have them sweep, vacuum, take out the garbage. Uh, they're probably going to do a really terrible job, but at least they'll stop talking for a minute. <laughs> for example, when it was snowing this week, I gave Hunter one piece of clothing at a time to take downstairs to the laundry room. <laughs> he did cardio. He was so tired. Up and down and up and down. He thought I was an idiot because I'd be like, oh, I forgot this one. Can you take that down? And he'd, oh, and he'd come. I just kept going. <laughs> Do those stairs. And he'd be like, can I take, can I take more than one? I'm, no, go. Absolutely not. All right. Rule or God, I keep saying rule. Advice number four, diets don't exist anymore. Mm. Now I know nobody wants to come out of this fat. Believe me, I worked my ass off to lose 35 pounds before this started. But what you don't want is to come out of this skinny and depressed. Eat the bread, cookies, your child's Easter candy, eat all of the things. All of it. All of it. Feeling sad that you miss your friends? Put a cookie in your hand. Now you're a little (laughs) less sad. That's true. (laughs) Worried about when you'll be able to return to work? I guarantee some Reese's peanut butter eggs will take your mind off of that. Mm -hmm. There is comfort in knowing that when we all get back together with your friends and family, that everyone will look like they put a little bit of weight on. 
but nobody will care because you will feel so nice and squishy to hug. <laughs> hug me. <laughs> hug me. I'm fatter. <laughs> TJ goes last night. He was like, so um, since we're <clears throat> clearly not dieting right now, do you think because we're buying so much rum, we should go back to Ronnie because Captain's way more expensive. And since you don't care if it's gluten free or not anymore, maybe we should just get the cheaper rum. <laughs> you can get Admiral Nelson doesn't have sugar. That's true. Wait, that's basically yeah. good for you, right? Yeah, it's, I, that's how we lost weight. Just <laughs> nonstop alcoholism. <laughs> Advice number five, you are not a teacher. It is kind of fun to play teacher at home, but I can guarantee you your child does not feel the same. Sure, they tolerate you, and deep down they appreciate how hard you're working. But going from a trained professional to your mom telling you to focus 400 times a day is wearing thin on their nerves. Now for context, try and imagine this. You're sitting at your desk at work. Then enters your sweet mother. You're happy to spend so much time with her, and you imagine what a fun day you could have together. But then, your mother starts to criticize how messy your workspace is. Then, she comments on why you're fidgeting so much. Staring over your shoulder, she comments that she does not think that you're actually doing that right. When you start up a quick conversation with your coworker, your mom tells you to stop chatting and to get back to work and focus. At the end of the day, you will tell HR to ban that woman from entering the building again. <laughs> there is a reason teachers exist. They are beautiful unicorns who are trained to tolerate your child's bullshit and can teach them through proven and effective methods. Then when they get home, you can just enjoy being their mama. So, when you and your child are about to throw down over reviewing sight words, fucking skip it. It's not worth it. Go for a walk, play a game, watch a movie. They may become illiterate, but your relationship will be fine. That's all that matters. You just need your baby to love you. Yeah, it's not worth any of these fights. Can you imagine how fucking... Can you imagine having your own mother as your teacher during this time? No. No, absolutely not. And it's just not the base. It's not the... Anyone's mom is incapable or stupid or mean or anything like that. It's just you you don't want to listen to anything your mom says. No, so I don't. All right. Advice number six. Responsible day drinking is acceptable during a pandemic. Mm -hmm. This one is a touchy subject for some, and I get that. So if you do not drink, please ignore this piece of advice and go enjoy your disgusting LaCroix. The argument Those that day drinking are legit disgusting. Who can drink they that? They are. Lime flavor? My fucking ass. It is not. Well, it is bubbles. It's just bubbles. There's better ones. If you got like a Perrier or something, those taste way better. LaCroix is disgusting. It is not good. And people who call it LaCroix need to be <laughs> completely lobotomized and just put in a home. No. The argument that <laughs> The argument that drinking should only occur in the evening is absolute buffoonery. This is basically your child. I just like the word imagine, buffoonery. I wanted to put it in somewhere. <laughs> Complete buffoonery. <laughs> so, saying that drinking is only acceptable in the evening is also the exact same as this scenario. So, your child sees leftover birthday cake on the counter. They know it's delicious and how happy it's going to make them if they eat it. So, they get up the courage to ask mommy if they can have it for breakfast. Mom scoffs and says, cake is not a breakfast food. The child looks into their lap, feeling disappointed, as they wait for mom to make them breakfast. Then mom slaps down a plate of fucking pancakes, covered in chocolate chips, and slathered in syrup. Do you see the hypocrisy here, Jessica? Do you see it? I mean, I would never make it's the, those pancakes. It's the same thing. It's very unhealthy. They're both cakes. They're both cakes. <laughs> so... If you want to have a cocktail at noon, then you fucking do it. There are no laws against it. Just don't get fucking sloppy around your kids. Save that shit for later. Mm -hmm. All these people that are like, you don't have to drink during a pandemic. Here's things you can do instead. Fuck that. I don't want to do anything. Every any single things. one of those is boring. All of them are boring. I'm not getting drunk during the day, but if I want to have a nice stiff glass of whatever the fuck's in my cabinet, I'm going to have it. <laughs> and then I'm going to take a nap. And then I'm going to be responsible. My kids are safe. I'm not My driving kids are just anywhere. Fine. <laughs> I saw a thing on Facebook that was like, in 20 years, our country will be run by people homeschooled by day drinkers, and we should be way more concerned about this. <laughs> hey, that was the same thing in the 60s. Those housewives, that's mm -hmm. all they did too. Fucking had bridge group. All the kids were just 
out getting kidnapped and molested by strangers and they just oh, drank no. and smoked their cigarettes. <laughs> God. That so got happened. dark fast. <laughs> oh, that's just where it goes these days. No, it's totally fine. It's all these women are like, you're going to do this and your kids are around and don't you see, just get creative with your day. Don't let yourself get bored. Bitch, this is boring. This is just boring. There's nothing to do. <laughs> I've already cleaned I've my house 12 everything. times. I can't do it. My house has never been cleaner. It's, yeah, there's nothing else to do. There's nothing else to do but to like have a day drink, take a nap, eat. Do it all That's over it. again. Fucking Groundhog's Day. Here we go. <laughs> Advice number seven. Self-care has changed. Gone are the days of going to the nail salon, getting a facial, waxing that bush baby, or getting your roots touched up. Here are the days of busted acrylics, fuzzy upper lips, and gray hair. Mm -hmm. We are back into the Stone Ages, ladies, and it's time to embrace how unattractive most of us really are. (laughs) Oh, God. So now that all the superficial shit is gone, it's time to focus on real self-care. Take a nap, read that book you've been meaning to, rewatch your favorite TV show or movie, make your kids roll their toy cars on your back and pretend it's a massage, and wear pajamas all day. Self-care is about taking care of yourself, not everyone else in your life. Enjoy the break. We will all go back to being fake basics in no time. That's true. Very true. It's true. What's the fucking point? Why is everyone trying so? Who are you going to impress? Nobody can get a haircut right now. I don't know what I'm going to do about my kid's hair. I'm not brave enough to cut it. I'll fuck it up. He's so cute. Yeah, just let it be. I'm letting all of her just grow it out now. He's just going to have hockey hair. I well, don't, don't you? You've buzzed his hair, don't haven't you? Oh, a hunter never. I will never you, touch Oliver's hair. Oh, no, you haven't touched he's Oliver's. Got, he's got that same texture as Jackson. It's like yeah. so beautiful and wispy. it's like a cute little like comb over or like you know whatever like cute actual hairdo it's not just a buzz cut i can't i can't do that to my baby yeah hunter's hair is always just grown thicker like travis it's just grows straight up doesn't grow down he mm-hmm. could never have the hair that oliver and jackson has he's got three colics in the back like no. <laughs> all right i only got three left okay advice number eight your house does not need to be perfect there's not much explanation required here. Keep it sanitary. Keep it safe. But nobody gives a shit about your baseboards, Karen. Nobody's coming over. Nobody. Right. Nobody's here. Nobody's coming. No visitors. Mm-mm. No one cares. Keep it sanitary. Keep it sanitary. That's from Lord <laughs> of the Rings. Made me very proud. <laughs> Advice number nine. Find random reasons to still be a bad bitch. I've been doing this. This is the funnest uh, opportunity. <laughs> Yes, it's just another Tuesday, and yes, you're making spaghetti again, but sometimes you have to remind yourself that you are not just a human wastebasket. Smoke that eye out, curl your fucking hair, and put on that skanky top you wish you had a reason to wear. Your family will stare at you while they sit in their pajamas, but damn, you will feel good as hell. (laughs) It's so much fun. Snap a couple cute little Snapchats and save them for your, your spank bank later. Yeah. It's a great time. I walked around on Easter. Like we, I made everyone get dressed up for Easter. I had a cute dress on in the morning, and then I had like a midday dress once the one kept falling <laughs> off too much, and I kept flashing my children. And then at night, we all like got dressed up for Easter, and it was so much fun. It felt like we were going somewhere. It was like, look at me. Look at me. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ugly. Oh, I am so ugly, but Stop it's okay. It. I'm Stop. ugly, but then you're ugly in a dress. It's so different. It's less ugly. It's like dumping glitter on a turd. You it's know, it's really still a shiny. piece of shit. But yeah, but That's look at how beautiful. shiny it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last piece of advice: you do not have to set any goals while in quarantine. I side note: I'm so sick of people that are like, "I'm going to learn to juggle. I'm going to do that." What? Those are people who are home without children and just their spouse. That, those are those people that are like, I'm going to learn a craft. I could see how that, I mean, that might work for someone, but for someone else, you know, maybe that works for you, but I feel like someone else would, you know, I'm sick of being a sparkly piece of shit. I want to do something with my time. I'm going to make a goal to, I don't know, learn a fucking hobby. Mm-hmm. Yes. That works well, for some people. Let me get people. to the, it does work for some people. I'll tell you who. Me. All these posts about how you should <laughs> all these posts about how you should set goals and come out of this with a new skill are written by absolute psychopaths. Still, <laughs> I still wrote me. that ahead of time. <laughs> you, you are not expected to come out of this with anything other than your will to live. 
These are incredibly strange times, and humans are not supposed to be isolated like this. Set the bar low. Focus on making your day-to-day life enjoyable, and do not think in the long term. Nobody will be applauding you at the end of this because you can now speak broken Spanish, or that you finally learned how to knit a fucking washcloth. But everyone will applaud you for trying your best to take care of yourself and your family. Look at you, Cheryl. Your kids don't have any bruises, and you're still married. That's amazing. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. Those are the words that you want to hear. Yes. Not, look at you, Cheryl. That's a beautiful Fabergé egg. No, <laughs> I mean, that seems like a valid hobby, like a good craft to have. I agree that you shouldn't have no goals. Like, my goal is to just be better at, like, keeping up with stuff around the house and trying to do more like intellectual things with myself, but like demanding that everyone in society must come out of here, you know, with a brand new skill set that they can display to the world. Like, nah, you know, some people just don't want to kill themselves. You know, there's a lot <laughs> of people out there that are alone. <laughs> yeah. there's, there's, think of everyone who's single out there alone in isolation. Like that's, Ugh, that's, that's dicey. a bummer all by yourself but just don't put pressure on yourself if you want to do that if there's something like i've always wanted to learn more impressions you know i only got like three if i all of a sudden decide i'm going to dedicate the next three weeks to only practicing my marge simpson great <laughs> that's what you, gotta you don't do. have to you have it's to not work a- on your impressions and then present those to us in an episode in the near future okay yeah i have a, I have a few i have mickey mouse I have Lois Griffin. I have Mr. Burns from The Simpsons. <laughs> See? Collect them all it. and uh, mm-hmm. perfect some others and uh, bring them to the table next time. Do a guessing game. There you go. <laughs> like you're not going to be able to guess who the fuck Mickey Mouse is <laughs> compared to Mr. <laughs> Burns. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> If you want to ha- come out with a new skill or a new hobby, go for it. Sky's the fucking limit. You know, I maybe I'll finally learn how to do a cartwheel for the first time in 29 years. But it's not required. Just get through your day the best way you know how. <clears throat> so, mm-hmm. in, in conclusion, the point of all this is to just focus on how to find bits of happiness during the day and to accept the moments where you need to be sad. Everyone is losing their sense of normal life, and it's okay to be sad about it. Take time to grieve it and then do something that sparks joy during your day. Don't Mm -hmm. compare yourself to others online that act like their lives have never been more perfect because they are lying. (laughs) Be kind to yourselves and others. This is temporary and we will all get through it together. Yay. That's it. And I'm, I know I'm luckier than the person who's all alone. I know that I'm luckier than the woman who can't have any kids. I know I'm luckier than the widower. Mm-hmm. Or the wife whose husband is deployed. Like, I know I'm luckier than probably 80% of the population. Sure. But we're all allowed to, like, pity ourselves a few minutes in a day, you know? Yeah. And, and you've like, got your own, like, you've got your own struggles to overcome. It's not like you're better than everybody. You've got your own things to overcome. Your life is different and you, it has changed. So you have to adapt. Mm-hmm. I need more things to do. Maybe I should be the hobby person. <laughs> what well, like ADHD too it's like and then being medicated for it there's only once I run out of things to do around here it's really uh it's kind of a mind fuck because then you just feel like a hamster in a on a wheel right that's <laughs> running but has nowhere to go like <laughs> kind of need more shit to do I've already organized every closet there's nothing else to do that's why I was like asking Travis like can I paint the playroom like that'd be a really great <laughs> please focus for my mind and he's like no why would we ever do that we're gonna rip it out anyways in a couple of years i'm like but it could be pretty for a few years my lord <laughs> please i need something to do please i can't just wait around and cook dinner again <laughs> uh, please call me a housewife again sir please make me feel belittled and useless <laughs> this is why day wine is inappropriate i'm so excited to go on my drive soon It'll be an adventure. I think I'm going to take the long way. I'm definitely going to take the long way. The scenic route. Turning into a 40-year-old dad. <laughs> let's, take the, let's take the back roads, kids. Yep. We don't ever want you to figure out how to get to a normal destination. <laughs> We're going to go east on this street. 
or the other direction? You just take an east. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know how to get there, and I don't actually know which direction is east. So Dad always used to do that. He would say, "Okay, you gotta go to this," because I would call him for directions whenever I was lost. He knew wherever I was, and he'd be able to tell me where to go. Mm-hmm. You gotta go west on the next street. Okay, Dad, left or right? Like I don't know what west is. Yeah, that's so stupid. Yep, Travis loves to just randomly go, Amanda, where's north right now? <laughs> I, was, I was just throwing arm out there he's like that's south and i'm like I don't, why would i know where north is right now right there's not even stars out <laughs> my let me pull out my compass <laughs> oh man no god start looking at moss i'm like uh, uh it's growing all around this tree <laughs> this is a trick question <laughs> you understand <laughs> oh gosh I gotta go meet a police officer for some hand sanitizer, and I gotta come home and change from my daytime pajamas to my nighttime pajamas. Mm-hmm. And then, Switch to your yeah. nighttime wine. So, that's rum. Yeah. Yep. I suppose. Wine's for daytime. It's too dry to drink too much. <laughs> it's a really good method to have. You can't good just slam it. Yeah. Yeah. The rum, though, that's for nighttime. The first night with my husband back home, so there's going to be a lot of hand stuff. I've not felt a human's touch (laughs) in four days. So much fondling. I just mean, like, on the waist and stuff. I just want to poke him. (laughs) You're warm. Don't touch his pants, though. I hear that's really dirty. Pee-pee pants. (laughs) Absolutely not. I will never pull down another person's pants for them (laughs) in their life. Not my kid. I mean... Oliver is the cleanest one because he wears a diaper. Mm-hmm. Everyone else, pee-pee pants. No. <laughs> all these girls with high-waisted pants now, <gasps> it's all I'm going to look at to see if they have pee-pee handprints on their pants. Why would they're they have handprints? Pants. Are you going to hold, like, a black light up to them? I bet just, no, I just, I imagine some people pee on their hands sometimes. Yeah, all the time I pee on my hands for sure. I just yeah. have my hands. I'm saying the girls that wear high-waisted pants. Because they have a really huge vagina. That's why they have to have all that fabric on their pants. <laughs> their labia will fall off the top if they don't have the waistband up oh. to their nipples. Okay. Sure. <laughs> there was a book I started to read. It was a sample book before I purchased I didn't purchase it. And it said that the girl was insecure because she had abnormal, abnormally large lips. And I went, nope. <laughs> Not interested. On like her vagina abnormally large like just everyone's some people ain't got no pussy lips some people got lots of pussy lips but you don't need to say it's abnormally large <laughs> i'm closing this book immediately that's just gonna make it awkward is it is it elephant ears like i don't understand <laughs> what you're talking about <laughs> i didn't want to get to the part where the guy pulled her pants down and he was like oh ah! like, <laughs> he's just like digging <laughs> through them to get in there was there a landmine here before? <laughs> what happened? I'm going to write a smut book that just says abnormally large labias and see how many people buy it. And then I contact them and tell them they're disgusting. You're, what kind of weirdo oh. buys a book like this? <laughs> abnormally large asshole. <laughs> Extremely huge areolas. <laughs> Oh my god. Non existent penis. Yes. We can keep going all day. Thank you. All right. Well um, unfortunately no. we can't record all day, so I'm gonna have to go uh before Good. I continue. Good. I will continue. Well, uh join us next week for Smut Club. We have uh even more week to read it. It is Thunder by Willow by, Yeah, enjoy that. Uh, play and with your fidget hint, box. Hint, hint, it's really fucking good, so read it. It's so fucking good. Well, I'll see you next week. Okay. I won't see you. I'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.